like to call the May 24, 2021 Special Board Meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Old Order. Susan, you taking roll, Cindy? Yes. Roll, please, thank you. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. We can hear you, actually. Good. Trustee Herlick? Here. Trustee Hanshaw? Here. Of course. Trustee Shawnbell? Here. Thank you. Item two on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Uses of their, their 
retirement funds than to pay for an excessive number of library programs. So I ask those residents who say they are willing to pay an extra fifty dollars to explain to the residents who have lost jobs, lost income, and the twenty-five percent of the Niles community who live on fixed retirement income, why those residents residents should pay for an excessive number of library programs. My second point is as follows. Many libraries have a limited number of public computer workstations available, and patrons are encouraged to bring their personal laptops or old devices to the library to do their work. However, this does not seem to be the policy of our library, which maintains a total of 87 workstations to be used by less than 60,000 users at a typical year. Now, the most recent data, again, from the IMLS shows that the district library has the largest number of computers per user among district libraries with a service population of over 50,000 residents. That's 12 other district libraries within this area. And priority for accessing these computers are given to main dials, power holders but only 25% of the residents within our service district have library cards. That's very low, and that's not seen in other local libraries. Now, in addition, the electronic expenditures per user for our library are the second highest for a comparable district library, second only to the St. Charles Public Library District. So I ask the library board to maintain sensible spending aligned with the current financial conditions investigate whether this level of expenditures and equipment is necessary. Thank you very much. Basha Folga and I've been a resident of Niles for more than 23 years. I believe that one of the strengths of our nation is in its multinational nature. The extent to which Americans are fluent in multiple languages is important in our ability to understand other people and also ourselves. This multicultural, na um, multicultural nature is highlighted by the 2019 census for Niles, which shows the diversity of the library's residents with Asians and Hispanics at about 21% and 9% of the Niles' main population, respectively. In addition, about 20% of Niles' residents self-identify as Polish, like me and my family. However, a review of the virtual programs that are offered for next month by the library shows only two programs in Polish and none in Spanish. The library's virtual programs are provided almost exclusively in English. I asked the library director, how can virtual programs only given in English be considered diverse for our community? As stated earlier, Hispanics who comprise about 10% of the Niles main population and virtual programs in Spanish are not being provided in the near future. Other libraries have virtual programs providing story times for children, library focus groups for adults, online English as a second language or ESL resources, and other resources such as foreign language magazines in Spanish as well as other languages. A diverse library virtual program should be delivered via Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube in multiple languages, not just English, to further involve the Niles' diverse main community. The library should also purchase reading materials such as those as, such as magazines as well as books in multiple languages as identified by a Citizen Book Selection Committee containing involved residents to identify library materials of greatest interest to the Niles' main community. I also ask the new library board to replace those existing library programs with low attendance and with those specific to the Polish, Hispanic, and Asian communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. meeting in November of 2018, which led, what, what led me here 
the Deville Library was planning on purchasing a home next door to main parking. So much money for this purchase. Leveling it, paving it, putting lines. Didn't do it. Lots of money. No, they did not. Lots of money. Thank God it never happened. I learned a lot from just that very first board meeting. I learned the director had a blank check and he bore to grant her every wish he had to write a check. I also learned that there were bullies on the board too. Sadly though, I walked out shocked, but I continued to return month after month, drama after drama. But I left knowing what's going on and how my money was being spent. Taxpayer money was being spent in outrageous ways. Here are some examples. Tax levy increase. Fall of 2019, even though the households were just recently assessed, the taxing bodies were already getting the natural increase, but the library wanted more. Most recent bonus, $3,000 for Susan Lundke during a pandemic. Raise for Susan Lundke, plus another bonus last year. The library is staffed with 112 uh, staff members. Agreement with the Culver School for parking, Thousands of dollars. No one parks there. Chapter one, thirty-three thousand dollars <coughs> increase at a board meeting from four to six times per year. And postage, which I don't have a number for. Mischievous behavior. Susan relentlessly talks behind residents' backs and gets caught doing it. Tim Spinoni and Dennis Martin getting into a almost fistfight during a board meeting because of a corruption in the ad wanted to include in the minutes that it was voted down. Watch the video. Patty calling Carolyn a name during a board meeting, throwing a tantrum. When residents asked the board in, at the October 2019 to speak to why the levy increased, board members ignored us. Cutting out parts of the board meeting that was that are only favorable to the director of the library. Trying to silence the public by limiting, by limiting public comment to 30 minutes per meeting. Not doing thorough residency checks on potential board members, so embarrassing. Most recently, Umer, who sat on the board for five months, and he said at his interview, or he, even, he said, excuse me, at a board meeting, when he was called out on it, that he made it crystal clear that he was just moved into the library district. Fell on deaf ears. During a Zoom board meeting, I cannot recall which month, Susan was asked about how much work it would be to furlough someone to stay, in, sorry, someone, how much it would cost for someone to be furloughed. She said it would be hours and hours and hours of work. And that was before you had an assistant, but you make a lot of money, so you have time to do those things. You get paid to do things like that. By the way, the library is the only taxing body who do not furlough or have a hiring freeze during the pandemic. Village of Niles, Park District, both did furloughs and hiring freezes. Solar panels and roof gardens. Endless wish lists by the board members. Niles is not the Taj Mahal. Niles Library is not the it's not the Taj Mahal Library, it's the Niles Main Library. You're going to be voting tonight on Steve Yassel. According to ILC 16 30, 16 uh, 55, contracts for library services and other matters, the board may contract with any public or private corporation or entity for the purpose of providing or receiving library services or performing other acts necessary in proper provisions of this act. So they have, the rules are here, they can do it. On a website, a employee of the library, this is on Facebook. Hi everyone, I am a, I'm not gonna list her name. Hi everyone, I am a resident of Mount Prospect, a library at, at Niles Main District Library. In a recent board election, a block of residents who were openly hostile to the library ran on the campaign of saving taxpayer money and water. They have scheduled a special board meeting for this Monday where they plan to make potentially very harmful policy changes, freezing hiring, spending, and hiring a consultant, who we believe actually work on their campaign. Members of the local press have been contacted 
We're working with local Niles and Niles group to drum up support for the library and expose the corruption. Corruption? Where have they been for the last, I don't know, I've been going to board meetings for almost three years. I've seen it before my very eyes. Where have they been then? Um, the library consultant, they wanted to hire is Steve Yassel. He ran for Niles. His company is Yassimil Productions. He has a YouTube recording on several board meetings. A smear campaign and to vote for other people on their block. I have posted the meeting agenda below. So for a lot, for a long, sorry for the long post, but I'm just trying to get attention on what's happening. I'm almost done. How am I doing for time? I'm sorry. I don't know how many, but you've got more time. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. All right. Let's not forget, sorry. Let's not forget the residents of Niles elected new trustees because they represent change and based on tonight's agenda, that's what they were asked to do. In conclusion, the voters have spoken. It's time to move on. Thank you. Hi, my name is Agnes Volga, and I was born and raised in Niles. Um, my comment goes on to the previous uh, teacher's comment. It was brought to my attention that a current Niles Library uh, employee recently posted on a Mount Prospect page called We the People, Mount Prospect Area. This employee stated a number of mistruths about the newly elected library board and asked others to spread false information and work actively against any future change in library operations. It should be noted that the website for the library states the library is governed by an elected seven-member board who serves six years term. The Illinois Library Association also states that library employees should not advance private interests at the expense of employing institutions. The people in the Niles Main District elected a new slate of candidates for the library board who promised change. I think this employee should be reminded that these candidates had a clear mandate to implement their platform which included sound financial oversight and well-needed change to our library. It should also be noted that this employee openly stated that they are a Mount Prospect resident and do not live in Niles and therefore they couldn't vote in the past election. It is highly unprofessional for a civil servant to pay by our tax dollars to openly work against the wishes of the recent election. Furthermore, it should not be library policy to allow its employees to work against its, the recently elected library board, and the library director should tell library staff that this is unacceptable conduct. This type of behavior is indicative of library staff who are openly derogatory of control by the library board and by the extension of the people elected by them. This type of behavior cannot be allowed. Going back on my last thing, the, right before I came here to do public comment, there was a sudden policy change about how we're going to have a lottery for public comment, which begs the question, who is running the library? Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Toy. I'm speaking tonight because I am very concerned as a library patron with some of the proposed motions on tonight's agenda. One proposed motion is to award an open-ended contract to a friend of the new board members who owns a video production company, Favoritism, at its best. This company will assess and inventory library equipment, systems, and operations. I don't know how a video production company is qualified to do that. One very important point I'd like to mention is that the library already has an IT inventory list of all computer and major technology equipment. There is no need to pay for what already exists. The three new board members ran on being fiscally responsible. I don't believe they are doing that with this motion. Suspending capital projects through June 30th is also on the agenda. If your house needed a new roof, would you wait to get it fixed? I don't think so. Another proposed motion is to change the appointment policy. 
the board wants to approve all new hires. This seems to be micromanaging. The new motion also states that the recommendation for approval of the new hires will be made at the official board meeting. I believe the board is hindering the hiring process. Both of those are not one of the board's responsibilities according to the state of Illinois library trustee manual. The board is also proposing to suspend purchasing through June 30th. This seems like they want to cripple the library's daily operations. Again, not what trustees should be doing. In my 36 years as a Niles resident, I have never witnessed such a horrible abuse of power as the new board members are exhibiting. Thank you. Carson appeared last 
in August of 2013, before the series, before his series of shows. Karnick could take an envelope that's sealed and put it against his head, come up with an answer, I'm sorry, and then they open up. The, then they open up the quite a little problem breathing with it. Well, we all did. No, I know. I don't want to pass out. Hold on, look at this dance guy. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so Carnegie, he would be able to put an envelope against his head. No, I get to breathe. Like Carnegie would put the envelope against his head and come up with the answer to the questions in the envelope. Last time I was here, I put an envelope to my head, and I predicted the attacks that the board was going to receive. Now that these new board members came on, welcome to Cook County, Illinois. Why can't we get it in our heads that it's a lot? I use the term fiction. It's a lot that by cutting spending, you cannot fund every single program in this library. It's a lot that by cutting spending, you have to decrease services to the public. It's a lot that that child who comes in with mom is not going to get served by this library. We support the library, but we want it run efficiently. Like I talked about, don't put a Chevy in my driveway that's 36000 in value and bill me 72000 for it. You're not doing me any favors, but it takes courage to do that. In Cook County, spending is done to buy one thing. It's to buy votes. It's real simple. For you to say yes, yes, yes to everything destroys homeowners. Good point about home value. The more those real estate taxes go up, the further down your real estate property goes. This is Niles, Illinois. People will only spend so much per month on a mortgage for litter. If your real estate taxes go up, you have to bring your property price down to bring up to get to that level where people will buy. What's also going to happen is our interest rates are going to go up. With our interest rates going up, thank you, thank you, with our interest rates going up, we're going to have to decrease the values of our properties as well. Whether it's 4% in overcharge, 40% in overcharge of the real estate tax bill. Your responsibility is not the 40%. Your responsibility is not the school board. You've been elected, and your responsibility is the library. The library budget is out of work. We all know. Okay? Can it be adjusted? Yes. And the programs are officially run? Absolutely. I pray God that you do it. And I pray God that you stay courageous. And isn't it interesting when they criticize you for taking back the authority that your previous board gave away, which they should never have done under the statute? Under the statute, you do not assign out all your authority for hiring and everything else to someone else. The buck stops here. When that budget's out of whack, it stops right here. When that levy is too high, it stops right here. You take on that responsibility. And it is amazing how we cherry pick. We don't want anyone for a contract to look into the computer system or the email, or the email hacking that I suspect, or improper access that I suspect. But we do want to keep all the, but all the other spending going. We want to keep all the special projects going. We want to keep everybody else spending. Use your discretion, use your intelligence, we you know who you are. My final comment, I lived here for over 30 years. Okay? I go all over the state. I travel to many states. We're a community of 30,000 people in Niles. Our, our library community is 57,000. <laughs> we should be treated with respect, but you don't get respect unless you garner it. I wear a suit coat today out of respect for the board, and the board gives you bad respect as well. We don't get respect when people use terms like white supremacy online, racism online, when I have a public comment read that was given by an employee at the last meeting, read by Ms. Lemke considering any other action that this board takes other than increasing spending is racist. That makes for great headlines in newspapers. It makes for a lot of fun for people to spit at each other back and forth on Facebook. Time. Time. 
but we need to stop it because it disrespects our community. Let's raise the level of maturity to raise our level of respect. Thank you. Lynch. Um, I just want to mention the current time is 7 o'clock. We started public comments at 6.32. They will end at 7.02. What? Um, what? Just just suspend the rules. Say hi. I'm going to suspend the rules, President. I think that in order for the public to be heard, uh, the campaign that Three new trustees ran, often mentioned the words of uh, community input. Um, our time, really, as the board, should be their time. And if they have come out tonight to speak, I think we should allow that. For a person who's wanted everyone to speak in between every single agenda item, we want to cut it short. Absolutely, because it's the policy. But we can't change that policy. We can't change it. I don't want to make a motion. I make a motion to give better rules to allow all the public to be I move that we suspend the rules in order to allow all the public that wishes to make public comment. I second. Okay. Two seconds. Can you please take the rolls? Let's remember what we ran on people giving their comments and their community input. Not what we ran on. No. No. I would like to ask that this particular resident get to speak the two minutes, the two minutes, and then we'll extend your time to finish your. your and all the public comments. that doesn't get to speak, please remember okay. that later as well. Yeah. Remember. I'll give you my work, mine too. We'll hand her all of our I think we're finishing the book. Okay, all right. We will be done at 7.02. If you're not done, I was going to extend to a courtesy. I'd like to try to maintain some order in this meeting room tonight. Thank you. Trustee Rosansky, the thing was whether we will vote to let people speak here. I vote to let people speak here. Yes. Trustee Olsen, she's you know, Trustee Olsen. Yes. I apologize, I thought the roll was finished. Four minutes, three, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, could you repeat this particular person's name against their loss? So I'll just track the where we were. Elizabeth Lynch. Okay, thank you. Just a few days ago, I was here asking you to live up to the principles you ran on. Transparency and community involvement. I asked for the chance to meet with you and tell me why the library is important to me and my family. Before you made changes to the services we love and rely on. But before your emails were even available on the library website, I saw that broad changes to policy, your own power as trustees, the library's mission statement, materials, and staffing, and of course, a contract with an unqualified person who worked on your campaign at $100 an hour had been slipped into the agenda of this special meeting. I am so disappointed. This is an affront not only to the thousands of people in this community that use the library, but also to the people who voted for you, thinking that you were true to your word. I disagree with almost every single item on this agenda, but obviously I won't have a chance to tell you why. And that is not responsible stewardship. I urge you, again, not to take any actions here tonight that would change our services, staffing, or materials until you've had a chance to understand what they mean to us and to the entire community. I want to point out that nobody up here got more than 2,000 votes in this election, and it was one of the lowest turnouts that we have ever had. 
There is no mandate here. The community of 57,000 people should have a say in the wild changes that you are proposing here tonight. Decorum, we have to maintain, we need to go on, get on with our meeting. So I'm going to have to ask these people to leave because they're unruly. That's what they want to do. I mean, then. Alright, so if you please escort them out. Either they're police, will be called, they'll be escorted yeah, exactly. out that way. If they don't leave, then would you please call the police because we need to go oh. on with our meeting. Okay. 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 Wait, 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 resolve the situation with the community that needs your help right now. I'm done with you people. That's terrible. And I'm not even on the side of the I'm done. That's a horrible decision to make. Identify specific people that have violated the policy and ask them to leave. We cannot just eliminate a lot of people because of the open meetings act. They have Okay, well, everyone who was screaming, please stand up. Let's try that. And the honesty and integrity obviously doesn't exist. So as soon as you scream out again, you will be asked to leave. I will come down and point you out because I don't know all of you. And since you're not honest enough to accept responsibility for your behavior, we're going to have to do that. So we, we're moving out on our meeting. Thank you, David. You can just sit around for a while. Please sit down, ma'am. The next item on our agenda, unfinished business. Agenda item 4A is regarding the price tags for health insurance. Do I have a motion that the Library Board of Trustees approve the recommended price tag to be charged for health insurance beginning on July 1st, 2021 and ending on June 30th, 2022? I so move. And I have a second? Joe. I'm sorry, who seconded? Joe. We have a motion and a second. We now can have save our library, library, save the staff, save, save the community. They please have the money. Yeah, we're leaving. We don't need to worry. We don't need to worry. Save the staff too. Okay, we are open for discussion. Uh, I will call in the trustees individually so that we can main, get through this more quickly and hopefully everyone can speak. Um, Trustee McCoolidge, do you have any comments? Yes. Um, I currently uh, 
employees are paying about 10 percent of the uh, cost of the insurance. Plus, they're getting about 1,600 hours for $2,500. The fact is, the amount they're paying is less than our seniors pay for Medicare supplement. And the quality of their, uh, this policy that we have at Blue Cross is greater than the normal supplement. It's dental and vision and uh, the normal uh, lower price supplement for Medicare. Uh, my suggestion is to bring uh, the employees up to the Medicare rate, which would be an increase from 10% uh, to 15% contribution. It would be about $45 or $43 monthly, and it's a minimal amount. Uh, this policy has been in effect since, I think this is the 11th year, I'm not sure, but it's been quite a long time. And we're, we're allowed to make a five-point uh, move in this, and uh, still maintain the uh, excellent coverage that's in the plan. So that, that would be my suggestion. Okay, thank you. Um, next is, oh, I'm sorry, I was, was going to say, uh, Go ahead, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. 25% of our, as the gentleman pointed out, our, our, our retired seniors in uh, for the library, I think the employees of the library could pay the same amount that the seniors are paying. Many of them are struggling with taxes. And, uh, for a matter of fact, Illinois and New Jersey are competing the last 10 years is which one's going to be the uh, have the highest uh, real estate taxes. And I don't know if we're first or second now or either way, but uh, we're the highest in, in, in Cook counties, uh, even higher than one of the highest counties in the nation for, for taxes of all sorts. So this, this would be a uh, help, help out the homeowners uh, and taxpayers. Everybody's a taxpayer, whether they live in an apartment, whether they uh, businessman or own their own home because uh, the first thing that the uh, landlord figures in, in, as a factor of the rent is the, is the tax bill. And probably the second thing is the interest rate. So uh, very, very important. It affects rents and the cost of living. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Trustee Schoenfeld, do you have any comments? Well, I okay, um, Trustee Hanushin. Trustee Yes. After the last meeting, Diane and I were leaving together and we were walking towards the employee exit and the insurance broker was there. She was quite upset. She told us if there are any changes, she's very concerned that Blue Cross Blue Shield might cancel the library's grandfather status. That's all I have to say. Thank you. If I can just yeah. clarify um, that statement, um, that would happen if we would exceed an increase in the amount above the grandfather limitation. So I had asked her in our conversation, probably prior to when she spoke with you, to please send me that information. She did have some difficulty make, uh, obtaining it. I did get some information, and uh, we've now determined what the ceiling is. So we never had any intentions of having our employees' health insurance canceled. So you can rest assured that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, next is Trustee Olson. Uh, yes. I understand Joseph Matula's wish to have employees pay more. However, we have to remember that our staff is also our community. We have the seniors who are community. We have the residents in our community. We also, our staff is in the community as well. They also are suffering from economic issues. They have spouses who have lost their jobs and illnesses in the family, etc. So why are we raising, why are we singling them out? They have to pay more, but no one else does. I think we have to consider what we are choosing to do today. 
Thank you. Um, Rusty King Adams. Yes. Um, I think it's a, a very delicate situation because we have this grandfather plan and we don't want to not have that. If we break that, that would be much more expensive down the road. Um, I think that in this past year with the pandemic, excuse me, the pandemic, <coughs> health insurance has really come to the forefront for a lot of people, including our staff, and that they felt very reassured by having good health insurance and be able to afford that because it's provided by the library. I would really hate to take that away from them and make them pay more for it. Uh, as far as Joe's comment about seniors paying, we that the staff could pay at least as much as seniors. Well, the seniors don't support families anymore, and a lot of staff members do. So I think that's like comparing families to torches. Thank you. Okay, um, I'd like to just um, make a couple of comments regarding everyone else's comments. Um, yes, our, our staff are president, or some of them are, and um, they are suffering just like everyone else does. But there are a couple differences. Um, our library staff was fortunate enough to be employed 100% through the entire pandemic. And we know that's not the case for our residents and uh, people anywhere else. Um, people have lost jobs. And as far as insurance goes, in any entity that you work for, except for maybe the Niles Library, your insurance goes up, your, your company changes, just clearly decides they're changing who the carrier is and you have to go with them, which causes a lot of people to lose their doctors. And we do not want to do that for our staff. That was what our conversation was about last month. Now they're talking about looking at the price tags. And since we haven't raised the price tags of our staff, and, and maybe seniors don't have children to raise, but they're on very low fixed income, and it's almost a comparison that you can't make with a um, parent who is employed, whether they have children or not. Um, there's a big difference between being a senior, trying to pay your real estate taxes and feed yourself. So, I mean, I don't think that's, that's really a good comparison. But I guess what we're trying to say is we've not raised the staff's insurance. And I think the increase that Joe suggested is minimal. I'm not sure if it's doable. So um, maybe Greg, could you give us a little more explanation with a 5% addition to their um, current, um, I think it's their premium. And what I didn't understand from what the rep sent me, is it 5% of the total insurance cost or is it 10% to 15%? So can you explain, um, can you just answer those two questions? Yeah, so um, thank you. I, I wrote something. This is what I sent to you. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know what the uh, what language that you're talking about uh, says is this was this was actually on the uh, renewal that we got from uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, that I shared with you in the budget package as well as uh, uh, last Wednesday's agenda. And yes. I think it was highlighted. And it says the Affordable Care Act provides a certain group of health insurance coverage in which an individual was enrolled on March 23rd, 2010, which was the ACA's date of enactment. May be a grandfathered health plan. Grandfathered health plans are not subject to certain ACA provisions. Among the requirements, in order to maintain grandfathered health plan status, uh, employer an employer's contribution rate toward the cost of any tier of coverage cannot increase by more than five percentage points since March 23rd. So what that says is that whatever existed on March 23rd cannot change by more than five percentage points. What existed on March 23rd, 2010, was a 10%, 90% cost split for single coverage and a 25%, 75% split 
for everything above. So family coverage, the amount of family coverage in excess of single coverage would be a 25-75 split. Um, single has always been 10 to 90. 10 to the employee, 90 subsidy from the, uh, from the um, So over time, what we have done is, as the prices have increased, as the prices of health care have decreased, we've adjusted that to maintain that relationship. Um, five percentage points would be taking it from 10% to 15%. Uh, that would be the maximum. You can never, uh, if you wanted to maintain this plan, you could have to change the number. Um, what Mr. Kapula did not say is if there were any adjustments to any other coverages, we only address what is the single coverage. Well, I think he meant it for the entire plan. So my question to you is, since it sounds like we need to work with the 2010 percentages. What's the difference between 2010 and now, and do we are we able to raise it 5%? Where do we stand? Uh, the last, uh, the presentation that I uh, gave you, the, uh, uh, the price tags that I gave you and was in the motion, was in the motion and presented at last, uh, at last board meeting. Mm -hmm. the table were calculated at 1090 and 2570. For all the different levels of family. Yeah, so, you know, the way the formula works, if you look at the front page. Uh, no, with all due respect, I'm fine with the formula. My question to you is, based on the 10, 25%, what can we do now if we wanted to raise it 5%? Can we do that and not affect our grandfather plan? Uh, yes, according to this language, you can. Okay. And, and those... Uh, those price tags are uh, calculated on uh, page two in the chart. And then you can see the differences in the price tags on page three. On the page three. So column one is what we're uh, what we're charging employees for coverage today in the, uh, in the uh, 19, uh, 2020 and 2021 contract. Uh, column two is what we calculated based upon the price renewals for 2021 and 22 at 10 and 25. And column three is the, um, the calculation of price tags at 15 and 30. So which sheet, which page can I look at to get an accurate account if we went up 5% what these amounts would change to? I'm looking at a page without a number because it looks clearer. It impacts on employees. Here, I'll give you my, my guess. But my question page is, three. which page can we look at? And you can address what we're having if we raise it's page three. It's page three right there on the bottom. Okay, and, and so. And, and these are the, oh, these are what I, I was just referring to. Okay, so if we want to raise it 5%, oh, this is what I'm looking at. Um, if we want to raise it 5%, then how would it affect the amount for each level? Can you give us a If you look at Column three. Is fifteen thirty. I see it now. Would be perfect. So it's going from ninety five to one forty three to go up five percent. That's impossible. Yeah, that's five points would be about uh, if we're going from ten to fifteen percent it would be an additional uh, forty uh forty seven fifty percent. So it would be 95 plus 47, which is still close. Yeah, the 143. It's still close. Okay. okay. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, the actual calculation is on uh, page two, uh, just previous. It's a table that says price tag calculations for the grandfathered plan. And, uh, in the header, uh, it says price tag calculations. 
column three, which is like the center column. You can see that the 91346, which is the contract rate from Blue Cross Blue Shield, at 15% is 142.57. And I rounded it to 142. raise it a certain percentage, we can never raise it again anymore. What is it column three or is it higher than column three? It's column, uh, column three. What I meant by that comment is that next year or the year after you cannot go from fifty percent to some higher percent. Okay. You, you can go lower. You know, I mean which if, I doubt that will happen, but if the board decided to go back to ten percent, I think they can do that. <laughs> and that de de is determined on what the insurance company is charging and what it states still on how much we have the percentage we take versus the percentage the employees pay. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's how much, uh, as, as they said in the, in the renewal. Um, it's the employer's contribution rate toward the cost of any zero coverage cannot decrease by more than 5%. So right now, uh, the Niles paying Mr. Piper a case 90%. It cannot go lower than 85% if you wanted to maintain the grandfather's status in this particular case. Thank you. And this will definitely be our stats. Yes. Okay, thank you. And I brought these numbers with uh, our broker as well. Thank you. And Greg, these are monthly? That's correct. Payments, okay. Thank you. All right, are there any more comments? Uh, the benefits are the same as well. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, it's exactly you know, the, the same plan that E2 EC1705 is the same plan identifier uh, that we had since 2010. Any other questions? Try to come up with what the actual increase per month would be, and um, it's amazing how it fluctuates. But it looks like for employee it would be forty-seven dollars more per month. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost fifty percent. Spouse sixty-eight dollars. Children goes down to forty-four. And then family 66. So that would be a monthly increase, is that correct? Well, we do not have a motion on the table. Are there any more comments about it? Yes, uh, I think if we were to do this uh, increase, we would need the deductibles in place. So they would have uh, after $500 to write yeah, but I, um, that's different. That's a different conversation slightly because the health plan has a twenty-five hundred dollar. Right. What, what I'm saying is, we we could do this here and leave the other part intact. Are you talking about the HRA? Right. Right. And that would be uh, uh, that's. Very, very generous. And the price tags, whether they go up or not, don't affect the HRA amount. It is whatever you determined it to be, correct? Or whatever it was determined to be. Okay. Great. If, for some reason, that were to change this HRA or whatever, that would negatively affect our grandfather's status. No, it's a separate. 
Thank you. Okay, well, we need the motion on the table is actually discussion. So, is any, does anyone at this time? I, I move to uh, uh, increase the uh, employee contribution to 15% and to leave the uh, HR in place intact as it is. Says 
uh, which had uh, the actual motion machine shows actual rates for the 2020-2021 payroll and 2021-2022 payroll. So I'm trying to make a statement that's parallel to that. You see what? It says move the light. Well, here's the. Well, here, we're we're moving on a motion, and the motion just indicates that we approve the recommended price tax to be charged. So you want us to read an entire paragraph into well, the minutes? Well, I mean, this is specific. So you're saying that just indicating we're going from five from ten percent to fifteen percent isn't isn't enough. Well, I mean, that's not the way this is written. Right. There's no mention in the motion of the 10% and the 25%. You know, so it says, who's the library trustee to approve the recommended price tags? And then, you know, those percentages I don't get mentioned until that's a further down uh, memorandum. Well, I think at this point, we want to just pass. Of course. It's, it's the increase. Do we want to recreate that form and pass it out to staff? And you want to add it to the minutes? And do you want us to? I, don't well, I, do, I want to make sure that we do what we intend. Okay, if you're only raising it five percent, you're raising it five percent from five percent points. Right. Yes. So if we make that statement, will you be able then to do the mathematical calculations to accurately let them know what they don't yeah, think? I mean, I've already done it. It's already it. done it. Okay. So, so right now, the motion can be five percentage points. But is that correct? But is that what you say it is, not what Greg says. But Greg's not on the board. But is that correct, taking it from 10% to 15% equals five percentage points? I just, I just want to make sure that the record reflects what you want it to reflect. A five, yeah. Yes, all we're trying to do and is the, increase five percent. I think the record should establish the actual price tags, which were calculated on that basis in those four months. Okay, we can read it right off the form if that would, would serve okay. your okay. explanation better. That's fine. That's the motion that I worded. Or we could leave it as it is, and we wouldn't have all this confusion. Can <laughs> the finance director please speak into the microphone? Because we can't hear. Respectfully, he's going to just tell you Sorry. what you're going to be voting on because one, it affects us too, just like you as residents, right? Let's get the clarification and keep it moving. Like, just make sure because you're going to vote on it and you're going to be held accountable for that vote, right? Just like I would. Just let's make the math right. That's all. It's simple. Now, so here's, what, here's what the motion is. Jesus. The employee rate goes to 15% contribution and the spouse. And child and family rate goes to 30 percent contribution. Right. Um, he hasn't broken down as a third column, and the numbers are uh, approximately uh, 143 for a uh, single employee, 448 uh, for uh, employee plus spouse, child, and uh, child alone is kind of like said, one or several child children. Both. Oh. Okay, 269 monthly. Is the new rate from 200, so it goes up 69 dollars. Family goes from uh, 445 to 575, mm -hmm. and that's 30 uh, percent. But we need to be a little clear and precise with the with the motion that we're moving on a motion. Okay, I think it said either give percentages for all of them or don't give the increase amount for any. There's there's different percentages here. Uh, what, you know what I'm trying to say is you're saying it went up $68 for this one, but we forgot to say how much it went up for the other one. Just be consistent. I don't care what you say. Just say it for each level. So if you want to say it for one, if we can make that motion one more time and Greg, if it agrees with what you're trying to get us to accomplish, please let us know. I make a motion that the insurance rate for single employees goes from approximately $95 a month to approximately $143 a month. For spouse, three fifty a month. To uh, with, with addition of spouse would be three fifty from three fifty a month to four forty eight a month. For child uh, or children, either one from two hundred a month to two sixty nine a month. For family, 
the rate would go from 455 per month to 575. That's the motion. Can I? Is that correct? I, 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 I think you're on the call. It's going from 96 to 143. Oh, okay. For spouse, 380 to 448. Great. For children, 225 to 269. Family, 509 to 575. These are all open Should I? Yeah, please repeat it. Read it again. One and three. Okay, thank you. We have to go to the current rate, not the other. Okay, um, the motion is to increase the employee contribution to our health insurance from $96 a month to $143 a month. To increase the employee plus spouse contribution from $380 a month to $448 per month. To increase the cost for child or children from $225 a month to $269 a month. We increased the cost for family coverage from $509 a month to $575 a month. Trustee for hiring approval. 
the presentation to be made to the board for official approval of appointments. Recommendation for appointments will be made official meeting at the meeting of the board of trustees for approval. Okay. What I see, there's a few other, but what I see in the trustee fact files from the Illinois Library Association, um, administrative role hire supervise library staff. Implement policies as established by the board. Receive and expand funds according to the budget. Okay. Okay, shoot. It's not the one. Okay, do you have that? Okay, can you please read it when it's your turn? Uh, I started to read the wrong one, so I'm going to pass that when it's her turn to uh, somebody else who has the book with them, because I just have a zero step. Okay, do you, are you doing more time? Uh, just that um, I, there were reasons that were brought to our attention why it is not recommended for the Board of Trustees to have to approve of every hire. Um, and I know I have to, here it is. The Library Board works directly, oh no, that's something else. That let, let them handle it, because I know in here, in this book, it states the policy for the state library. Um, and I give up. Let somebody else I'm sorry, I, I put it in the wrong order. Okay, thank you, Trustee Olson. Uh, yes. The current policy states, I quote, appointments of new personnel to the staff shall be made by the library director. Quote. The addition in this proposal of the words subject to approval by the Board of Trustees is invalid, unethical, purely a step to over control and micromanage. We have hired a qualified library director who according to our bylaws which read, I quote, the library director will have full responsibility for services, programs, book selections, and personnel management. I happen to look up personal management in the dictionary, the definition, hiring and developing employees to become more valuable. I believe that we cannot change the bylaws. As a matter of fact, changes to the bylaws are only made at a regular meeting of the Board of Trustees with five or more trustees voting in favor of the change. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Keenanum. Yes, um, first of all, movement is reflected on the agenda to approve changes. I'd like to know who recommended these changes because at no time was this topic brought up for board consideration and at no time was this discussed by the board as we are today. Who made these changes on their own? The public should know this is not a proper procedure. I'm not opposed to changing documents, but not without prior notice and review. The proposed changes for tonight were provided to me at 9.30 p.m. on Friday and when I printed them out, I hate to cut and tape them together because they print it out like this. It was very difficult to read them and make any sense out of them. As you can see, they were emailed in a format that's difficult to use, in addition to not being marked as to what is the current policy and what is the revision. And there are so many changes. It seems with some of them, it's being proposed to take hiring and creation of jobs away from the director and place it with the board. This is not our responsibility. As it is stated in the trustee binder, it is not the function of the board to administer the library on a day-to-day -day or incident-by-incident -incident basis. That's on page four of our documents from our lawyers. It's also stated, 
on page 42 of the trustee fact file, which is this book for your reference if you don't have it yet, that the administrative role of the library director is to hire and supervise library staff. We can discuss this, but it would be unlikely that we know better than the Illinois Library Association, which is who makes this book. Uh, the trustees of this board are woefully unqualified to hire and create positions because we don't have enough library experience between us to do so. We end up with unqualified and unprofessional staff. Another um, item in here is the um, background checking company, CompuData, CompuData Solutions. Um, that is recommended in this document has never been brought before this board. I don't know anything about them. Suzanne, Olivia, do you know anything about that company? We cannot hire a company without proper research and information. If the current company is not suitable, it needs to be brought before the board for consideration. And then this is where things really begin to shift responsibilities. Um, just to reiterate the fact that it is not the responsibility of the board to hire and supervise library staff. That is the responsibility of the director. Thank you. Thank you. If I could just um, clarify. The change to the um, policy 4.02 is mirroring the exact policy it used to be. In 2015, the changes that I presented is the exact policy as it was in 2015 with the addition of IMRF. And if you um, look at um, the IL 75 ILCS, which is the state of Illinois, which we are bound by under Where's that? oath, 75 ILCS stands what all, those are the statutes, the Illinois statutes. Was that provided on their agenda meeting? No, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that you're saying ILA says this and yes. ILA says that. We are not bound by ILA. That's an organization we pay membership to. Correct. We are elected officials, and we need to follow the Illinois state statutes. So if you read the Illinois state statutes for that libraries. That was not provided to me. About the appointment. If you, may I speak without interruption? You're confusing your role as an elected official. I'm just trying to clarify. So under the Illinois state statute, which we are all governed by, which we all know because we were elected, and it's been brought up numerous times, it's, it's in actually the trustee manual. But I'd like to read it to you because we need to understand we are obligated to the state of Illinois, not to any or organization that's a library organization. They give you guidelines, but you are obligated to follow the state of Illinois statute. And if I could just read this and then I can give you a little more clarification about we're not hiring people. I think there's getting, there's more confusion about Susan's role as the director. So can I just get through the um, at least the statute? Okay. It's 75 ILCS 16 slash 30 dash 55. The board may appoint and fix the compensation of a qualified librarian to act as administrator of the district's daily operations. The administrator may hire other employees deemed necessary by the administrator, fix their compensation, and remove those employees subject to the approval of the board. The part that we're bringing back to where it was in 2015 is this happens after the approval of the board. She still hires people. She still, she still interviews them. We just approve them. Why do we... I don't think that's And right. because that's, because the, the Do you want to approve the janitors? Okay, can I please talk without interruption? Good Thank one. you. I just did. Hey, hey, hey. Well, don't hey, hey, me. Hey, I uh, came here to hear them, them not you. We are bound by this statute. And all we're trying to do is bring back our obligations as trustees as they were in 2015. The, the problem was when the board took away all of our authority and now we are not controlling what's going on in this library so we're just bringing it back where it was and what makes it valid is it's in line with the Illinois state statutes which govern us so that's why these changes were made and I didn't pick them I didn't choose a few I went 100% back to what 402 was 
in 2015. And what I gave you was a copy of the 2015 copy of 402, because I figured since you're a new trustee, you weren't here those years ago and don't even know what it was. So if you look at that difficult copy to read, and unfortunately, we don't have a better copy. That's my copy from 2015. There, is, there are no records. It's not in the board book online, in the board agenda in December when it was approved. So I couldn't give you a decent copy. That was all I had, so I shared it with you. So you can understand we're going from the same thing it was, and that's what I presented to you today. Can I just say one thing? Well, I'm just, I just, I thank you for your explanation, but there are two documents here. One is about 402 appointment, right. and then one is about the library trustee. Okay, right now we're to talking about 402. We're not talking about anything else. Then why did you read that paragraph from the trustee? Meeting? Because you are bound by the Illinois State Statutes. We are and not I'm talking about the trustee manual. We are talking about the appointment. That is, that is the motion that we're on. You are bound Six by the eight. Illinois State Statutes. And I wanted to well, read it well, to you. Is it on here? No. It doesn't have anything to do with the paragraph that you just read. The paragraph that you just read came from the trustee manual, which is right here. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the appointment. No, we don't. I want to hear them. Be quiet. Yeah. Shut the there you go. There it comes out. I'm, I'm sure I did something to I offend read you. The Illinois State These State people State are offending you. And you happen to be there. And no matter what the side you fall. For what we're doing. No matter what side you fall, they're failing you. That helps you understand better. I have looked at that library act of 16 slash 30. Oh, okay. I, am, I have read that as well. You have no indicator that on this 402 appointment, which is what we're talking about. There's nothing on there about the Library Act. Nothing. Okay, well, we're supposed to know that we're bound. We're, an elect, we're elected officials. We're bound by the Illinois State Statutes. That's sort of well, common knowledge. Except why is it 402, 4.02 appointment? That comes from our policy. Yeah, it tends to make you think it's from I have, you know, I have no idea why there's so much confusion, but um, there's but, no confusion. I'm just okay. I thank you. What you say? Well, I just want to make sure that, that well, if you want to talk about say. the sec the next rule to make revisions to the manual, then we'll okay, excuse here. me. The motion on the table <laughs> is five. Move to approve the recommended changes to policy four zero four point zero two appointment. Are there any more discussions? Did you have any comments on the Comfy Data Company that we know nothing about? Okay, again, the copy you are looking at is the old copy from 2015, yeah, it's from 2015. which explains listed what no you, company name whatsoever. You know, we can't we cannot have this conversation. Okay, I think I'm gonna take a roll. Uh, we're gonna have Cindy take a roll because all of this constant interrupting isn't getting us anywhere. So are you unclear? Do I need to clarify? Please, one person. Ask me what you need. Yes, go ahead. Yes, tell me the paragraphs that are. Okay, excuse me, I was referring to Chester and Anna. I raised my hand. Oh, sorry. It's hard to see each other when we're, we're up here like this. Um, I just would like the clarification then, because in the document that I was given, or that I have, everything that I looked through, uh, I saw the original had no company at all listed for the background checks okay. and a new copy that we were given from for the agenda tonight it has one specific company name and i'm wondering where that came from the new one has a specific yes. company yes because she she said she's going back this oh, is from this. 90 but this is from what Thank you data thinking. solutions this is from the yeah, it's on it's here but old, not on it's here. an old list oh. i'm sorry do i have the wrong information no, I have both the both Okay, so do you have any comment on that? Okay, the data and all that information was back in 2015. I'm sure it was probably removed today because we don't know who we use, and so you don't have to change your policy every day. You don't put the name of the company that you do your um, employee checks with. That's all that is. Well, again, what you're reading is what it said in 2015. 
that was taken out in 2016. So you're not proposing a particular company for this? No, 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 but the procedure is still intact. Not the particular company. All right, I'm sorry, I don't want to confuse you anymore. Okay, are there any other questions? Or Can you read the, the um, headings for each paragraph so I'm clear? So it's clear to me what I am saying in this report. What do exactly? you have your 402? Because there's, yes, right here. Okay, the entire 402, 402 is what we are making a motion on. It's at page 4, 5, and 6, right? This, can I make it? No, please don't interrupt. It was the page, please don't interrupt. I'm not interrupting. The pages go from four to seven. Four to five, six, seven. Okay. There's nothing on here that indicates the Illinois State Library yet. There's nothing. You know, that's, that, that's done. That's done. She already stated there. Okay. I've got an idea. Okay. My question for clarification for her as well as myself. We are not voting on anything on your trustee relationship. This is all above the trustee relationship. Is that correct? No. We are changing policy 4.02 and it will reflect in its entirety what you have in your possession. So every single category that's on here is oh, part of 402. Do we need the second time 
reunion. So Olivia had seconded the first motion. So this is this. This is this is the motion. No, the motion didn't change. I thought you said you needed clarification. We're just taking a roll. Okay. And I reread the motion because I thought you said you weren't sure what it was. It's the same thing. There's confusion because you used the word amended in your motion. Thought it was a previous motion that now has been amended. So I use not the word amending amending. motion, you're amending the policy. So that was where the confusion came. Oh, I got you. So you're not going to just do okay. it. Thank you very Yes. 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 Trustee Rosansky? No. Trustee Olson? No. Trustee Keith Adams? No. Going up to the screen. The next item on the agenda is 5B. Do I have a motion to approve revisions Five. of the Niles May yes. District Library Trustee's Manual? Six B. I move the table until we have more time to examine this entire manual more closely. The documents provided in this is more than a simple revision. It has extensive additions, extensive deletions, very hard to follow. It fit. We need more time to review it clearly. Second. Okay, Cindy, please take the roll. Trustee Derwood. And this is on her motion to amend, correct? Table. 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 Okay, Table. no. Trustee Manisha. No. Trustee Manisha. No. Trustee Rosansky? Yes. Trustee Olson? Yes. Trustee King Adams? Yes. Four no's, three yeses. Okay, is there any discussion on this item by anyone? Plenty. Don't you have to make a new amendment or a new uh, motion? Motion? Thank you. We want we another point to restate the motion again? Yeah. Who we'll moved the first motion? I don't have. Somebody made. Somebody moved. You asked for a motion, but I didn't have somebody make the motion. Did we get a mo movement in a second on the first motion? There's so much chaos. I'm not sure what's going on here tonight. All right, we'll start all over. Okay. Um, I move to approve revisions of the Niles Main District Library Trustees Manual. But I need a movement. I need no, someone to no, motion. You, you, you just did. You just you made the motion. Oh, I read it. Oh, no. No, no, I read the motion. You moved it. Oh, I moved it. I did. I'm screwing it up. Okay, thank you. Okay, any, all right, and so who, um, I okay, great. All right, so now we're ready to um, have discussion. Trustee McCool, do you have any comments? Not at this time. Trustee Schoenfeld. <laughs> Trustee Manushik. Trustee Rosansky. Yes. Uh, part of this one statement, it's only like a sentence long. You dropped off the last half of it. And I'm concerned that you dropped off the last half of it, and I don't understand why. The board shall have executive control over the expenditures and of all monies. That's the way it stands, except it says collected for the library and deposited in the adapted funds, the funds for the money. So I just want to know which That's on under two, it looks like one sentence there. And I want to know why you are dropping the last chapter of that statement. Could you read this statement as it is? The board shall have exclusive control over expenditures and of all monies. The 
how to take your dropping has to do with that are collected for the library and deposited in the adapted funds. Well, because I'm just making a statement and, and whatever the expenditures are and everything that they're responsible for is what we find out from Greg Chris. So I didn't, I just, I did cut it. I just thought it was sufficient where it was. Okay. Is there a reason why you decided though? Besides just because we're responsible for those for those two items, and, and to go on with like further detail isn't necessary. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. The other question is, the library shall, and I know where this came from, but I'm asking you what this phrase means to you, because I've heard many people come up with different ideas that this phrase means to them. So I'm asking your explanation for this phrase. The library shall be for forever for the use of residents and taxpayers of the district subject to reasonable rules and regulation. The board adopts, renders the use of the library of the greatest benefit and the greatest number of the residents and taxpayers. What does that mean to you? It is another Illinois state statute which we are bound by. So I think it's self-explanatory. Okay. And again, on, the, on this other following paragraph, you added subject to the approval of the board. That's the main change I see. The board may appoint, fix, compensate of a qualified librarian to act as administrator for the district and daily operations. The administrator may hire other employees deemed necessary by the administrator, fix their compensation, remove these employees, subject to the approval of the board. That is also an Illinois state statute. Does it have in there subject to the approval of the board? Absolutely. I would okay. never make it up. Well, I'm not saying anything. Thank you. Um, and that, do we go up to B on this also, or is that another? Uh, the entire manual was given to you. Okay. Okay. What it is. Okay. Just a second. I know there was something else here. No, that's, uh, let's see, the page, this is something totally different. Over here, okay. Niles, the page, it says Niles Main District Library Trustee Manual, and it says 524-2021, it doesn't have a page number. But it says four minutes approval process. So everybody can see what I'm looking at. It says, okay, I'm giving people a chance to look for it. The sec, the number three, the secretary note taker will verify the corrections on the video or enter the changes to the minutes do not change, um, this does not change after the vote. What does that mean? That the ch this ch changes have to be done before we vote on whether or not we can change it? I would like that clarified. Could you read that one more time? Because I am not understanding. Uh, it said on there, do not change after the vote. Here you have on there the secretary note taker will ver uh, verify corrections on the video or enter the changes to the minutes. Normally we have on there not until after the vote. You want this done prior to the chance the, that we get to view it? And I think it's hard to understand if we don't read the whole thing. You know, I, the process. Number three. But what I'm saying is to pull out a section of the procedure to approve minutes? Uh, it seems I, hard to understand. We, I'm we questioning because normally we read the minutes 
and then approve any changes that are suggested at the following meeting. The way I read this, they should be done prior to the, the next meeting and and before we get a chance to read them and discuss them. Okay, I'm going to read your own E board minutes approval process, correct? Yes. Right. I'm, I'm gonna read it from I'm gonna read it in its entirety and see if that confusion clears up. A motion to approve board minutes is moved and seconded. Corrections to board meeting minutes are presented. The secretary note taker will verify the corrections on the video or and enter the changes to the minutes. So what I'm stating is, since in our past meetings, people couldn't remember what was said and and the only proof we have what actually was said so the minutes are accurate is by referring to the video. So to make it real simple, whoever is responsible for the minutes will, will, will review your request for a correction. If it's on the video, the correction is made. Okay, thank you. Well, does that help also? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? <coughs> Yes. Are we going all the way down the line? Oh, I'm sorry, Trustee Olson. Oh. Uh, yes. Um, thank you for your explanations. But if you would please yes. clarify the paragraph that Patty just read um, prior to this discussion, it was actually worth the word of the thing. I just asked for it. I want to know what. I don't understand what it means. Can you tell me? I don't understand what the The library is. shall be forever for the use of the residents and taxpayers of the district. Subject oh, I to reasonable it. rules and regulations, the board adopts to render the use of the library of the greatest benefit to the greatest number of residents and taxpayers. Okay, that is an <coughs> Illinois state statute. Yes. And, and I'm saying saw, a I'm sorry. I saw it, yeah. Okay, it's saying a couple of things. One is that when we determine how to spend our money, we need to make sure that the spending of money will benefit the largest amount of residents living within our library community. That's our responsibility, to make sure that the largest portion of money spent is going to cover the largest portion of people. I mean, we're responsible for the residents. That's what it's saying. So that's one section of it. Is there any other clarification of that that you need? Um, no, I just wanted to make sure that you and I were on the same point. Um, how does that affect our connection to sharing the books with other libraries? Or letting other people do that? Or letting other residents come in here and use our library? It's a guideline for how we function. So we need to consider that when we make decisions. Yes. So I do that. Tell me how you will, how this affects the fact that we share with other libraries our resources. They sure back though. Yeah. Yes, but but she's asking. Oh, I mean, I want to make sure that this that this, the, 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 this particular paragraph is um, allows that. The paragraph just makes sure that the money you spend is spent mostly on the people within your district. So you need to be. Okay. Stewards of the money, and when you choose to spend it, remember the residents should benefit in the in the largest percentage. Okay. All right. Thank you. Trustee Keen Adams. Yes. Yep. I'm going to piggyback on that idea. Just like to caution the board that if there's any inkling of intention in your heads to exclude people who are not from the Niles Main Library District 
to our library and services that uh, it could result in some serious repercussions because we are part of rails which is reaching across Illinois library systems uh, for the new trustees who may not be familiar with it. They serve 1,300 libraries across the state with services that include interlibrary delivery, shared catalog support, continuing education, consulting, shared ebook collections, cooperative purchasing, and more. If we exclude visitors from other libraries, there could be legal implications for this because of our membership in Rails, and I have that directly from someone at Rails. Um, and just to put it in context, if we aren't in Rails, we wouldn't be able to use the cooperative purchasing power that we just used to buy our phone system. We wouldn't have access to trustee training, trustee trainings like the one Olivia just completed that was through Rails. Uh, there would be no interlibrary delivery of books that we don't have here. We are also part of CCS, which is a consortia of 29 libraries that share their resources with us. Um, and because of that partnership, we are able to do programs like the City at Home and Author Visits. Um, another section in this is on board packet meetings, and it seems like it's attempting to limit trustees on adding agenda items. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Actually, if I'm going in order, I might as well address the agenda format. It comes right before that, I think. Uh, looks like the old agenda format had 16 items on it, and this one has 18. Number five, I think, is new travel requests. Virtual and in-person professional development is going to be on our agenda every month. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think we even need to review that. I think that's the director's job. Um, and number seven, ordinances and or resolutions. I'm not sure what that alludes to. Um, and then back to the uh, agenda, uh, trustees being able to add agenda items. Um, agenda items for discussion and vote require a documented explanation provided to trustees with pertinent details in their board packets. Any agenda item document, any agenda item documentation not included in the board packets on Friday will be removed from the agenda and rescheduled. The revised board agenda will be posted on Friday. I think the difference here is that, um, for example, if one of us wanted to add other to the end of the meeting, we have to require a document explanation as to why. No, an agenda item is an item that we need to vote on. And so many times we're getting information the day of the board meeting, the day before, and it's not enough time to absorb the information, especially when it comes to spending money. So my request is, all documentation for agenda items needs to be in the packet when we receive it, along with a copy of all presentations. We never receive a copy in advance of a presentation, which would help us to prepare and then be better equipped to ask questions. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, but I have to disagree with that. I have never experienced, I mean, I've only been on the board since October, right? But I have never experienced not getting proposals or other information that's been put forth. And actually, well, actually um, you have. If you recall with the roofing um, agenda item, we received additional documentation the day before the board meeting. I don't remember that. We did. Um, what I do know is that we had a meeting on Wednesday and then I turned around and get all this information on Thursday to meet for today and then I didn't get some of the documentation until 9.30 at Friday night and that made it very difficult to prepare for today. Well, it was just one item. I thought it was helping you out because you weren't here in 2015. So that's my mistake. I think that it was right for you to send the information. I think the format that was sent in and that short amount of time that we had between the last meeting and this meeting. Is something and again, uh, the format it was sent in was a paper document which I had in my records because the library does not have it in the board book online, which I was going to email to you. So if I did the next best thing, it was all I had. I apologize. Um, I also think that the FCAR board meeting videos are uploaded to YouTube and the library website by the following day. After the board meeting is very unfair to the IT department. That's not enough turnaround, especially if you want to make sure everything is uh, neat and tidy in there. Yes, I do. Um, and uh, number six, communications. Sections one through three um, go against what the trustee fact file says on page 44. 
before. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, so, could you read the discrepancy, please? Okay, yeah, I'm about to explain myself, yes. Um, trustees are encouraged to interact with library staff sharing information or asking questions. The director, as the sole employee of the board, will promote open dialogue between library staff and trustees. And number three, the director will support the compilation and completion of information requests by trustees to the library is what is in our agenda for tonight. And what it says in here, uh, as far as trustee relationships with subordinate staff, the situation with subordinate staff is quite different. These staff members will have been hired by the library director and report directly to her account. Therefore, it is important that the trustees avoid interference in the lines of authority between the director and the subordinate staff. Uh, these staff members that we have now, um, I feel like it's not appropriate for the board to engage in such ways with subordinate staff, and the changes here propose that trustees do the opposite, and I have a feeling that the staff currently does not feel comfortable coming to this board. Uh, for number five, um, yes, number five, communications. Emails sent to trustees of an urgent nature or requiring a quick response will also be conveyed by a group text or group phone call to all trustees. Communicating via personal phones is not an appropriate way to conduct business. Board emails are secure, but personal phones are not. Our emails are extremely easy for us to access as board members. We must all check our inboxes on a regular basis. The director could always alert us to check our emails if needed in an emergency. That is all I have on that. Okay, um, now we take a roll. Uh, Cindy, please take a roll. Yes. Was a one-page document that was created 
uh, and it really didn't belong to anything, but it did exist, and Trustee Spadoni implemented it, and that's the procedure we've been following. And um, I changed it to where instead of the movement in the second determine whether or not a correction in minutes can actually occur. So I think you brought it up as we went through the trustee manual. Okay. Since we changed it in the trustee manual, I just thought we would eliminate that single sheet of paper that just exists. Because it no longer is effective since the change was approved in the trustee manual. And, and honestly, I didn't. I don't have it. I move to table this until we can see the documents. Cindy, would you take a motion? I mean, would you take a roll? On the table? Oh, I'll second it just so you can okay. take a roll. Trustee Gerber? No. Trustee Hanishak? Oh, yes. Trustee Schwartfeld? Trustee Ricola? No. Trustee Rosanski? Yes. Yes. Four yeses, three no. Okay, the next item on the agenda is six D. Do I have a motion to approve a communications technology and procedural consultant? to evaluate, assess, and inventory library equipment systems and operations. I move. Wait, I'm not done yet. Gizzle Mizzle production at $100 per hour, report findings, and recommended to the board. I move. I say something. In order to better serve the patrons, we need to be sure that our streamlining and video systems function smoothly we don't want the library to fall behind in the city. And trustee may you check? Or a second? Oh, okay. I don't think one second. Yeah, did somebody second it? That's what she's asking. I don't know. I'm not. She's making the wrong Did Sue second? No, I'm just mentioning what I... Oh, okay. Okay, so we have a second? Yes. Okay. Okay, we may now discuss this matter. Um, Trustee Makula, did you have a comment? Yes. Uh, I want to read a statement. We need outside oversight and advice on operations of the library website, emails, computer utilization, web page, screening programs to patrons, Video recording of meetings and other library events. We want an inventory and assessment of all computers and technology systems, an assessment of software license fees and paid. Also, we would want to find out if vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerabilities exist to hackers, scammers, data miners, and system ransom. In order to better serve the patrons, we need to be sure our streamlining and video system functions. We don't want to, the library to fall behind in this area. Yes, I have a comment. This job, job description is very vague and open-ended. No one at the library is paid $100 per hour. We have staff, from what I read and understood of this description, this is for somebody to do inventory of our equipment. We have staff at the library at, that already inventory all the library equipment and unlike Steve, not only know what the equipment is, but how to use it, and in a, some cases, how to repair it. We should 
open this up to bids if this is a service that we truly need. And since this description is so vague, I don't know that we need it. Thank you. A trustee Wilson. Yes. We already have a wonderful IT department. They assess the library communication and technology systems already. We don't pay them $100 an hour. It's a waste of time and money to hire yes on this. Yes on this, I'm sorry. I heard from residents. One resident asked or actually complained that a non biased firm should be consultant. She didn't think this firm was non-biased. This, if we do want to hire someone like this, we need to post the opening, we need to interview, we need references, we need some kind of resume. The public needs to see it all. Making the right selection and choosing the best candidate with the best abilities, skills, and knowledge is necessary. Thank you. Christine Adams? Yes. Christine. Uh, where to begin on this topic? Um, I think we can begin by looking at the back of the room. You have public standing here telling you not to do this. Um, the public has spoken out. What do you have Here to hide with your with your sign, lady? Excuse what do you have? Oh, thank you. Because I'm trying to get a picture. We were afraid you were trying to jeopardize her identity. It seems like a lot of people are trying to identify her face. Stop. Cameras. It's just strange. What? Can You're doing you? it. I can't do it too. I am taking a picture. Of this okay. Well, that's what I'm doing. Please. The same thing that you're doing. Oh, they are quietly protesting. Yes, I am a hostile. It's unexpected, unexpected though. Protesting isn't allowed in a board meeting. Corruption shouldn't be in a board meeting either. Excuse me, Dave, can you help You me? know he worked on your campaign. Is that a bit of Seaskin or Lynch? Come on, please. Does he just go away? Chris, turn around. Put your mask on, please. Sure. I was beginning by trying to have you look at the public and address them um, because they have a good point. And it has been made on uh, social media a lot this week as well. Um, and the only person in this motion not here tonight is Mr. Yassel, who has been at almost every board meeting for the last multiple years. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. Um, I have to agree that he is not qualified for this job because his company is a wedding um, videography company. It's not an IT audit company. No one merits $100 an hour for this job, especially if we can't pay our own staff that much. We have never discussed this topic as a board as we have in any of the other things on this agenda tonight. You may be the president, but that doesn't mean we won't get to discuss things before we go on. Um, I don't think probably a lot of the current board members and maybe the staff know that in 2015 there was a library and staffing and operations study done professionally at the board's request by a company named Matrix. And in that report it was found that the IT department has many strengths and uh, I recommended that the IT department have two full-time employees and the support of part-time employees and that the IT desk should be staffed at least part-time with IT staff rather than librarians. There was no mention in that report of any need to assess or do inventory because it's already being done on a regular basis. Um, I also find it very interesting that you want to hire someone in this agenda item and then in the next agenda item freeze hire. That's a little duplicitous. Um, and I feel very strongly that it's a conflict of interest for you, Joe, Suzanne and Olivia, because Steve Yassel worked on your campaign, 
and it's a conflict of interest. I don't know how you could not see that and how you could hire a friend of yours to do work for the library. Very disturbing. Okay, um, what I would like to say is um, this is a temporary consulting position for the purpose of assessing and reevaluating many, many, many of our processes and procedures. I've been on this board for eight years, and I can tell you we do not have a documented inventory process. And there are there are many different procedures that we follow, but the issue that we have is that we don't seem to have the continuity or the end result where we, we can ascertain actually what the status of anything is. Um, I know you're new and you think that people are hired just because somebody knows them. I actually sat with him for four hours and went through all of his experience. I came up with a laundry list of issues that I see here at the library that aren't addressed or they fall by the wayside. And in order for this library to start to thrive, we need to organize our processes and procedures. We need to have justifiable outcomes or even notable outcomes. And that's why we need to pull someone in who's only going to be here a few hours a day, maybe a couple days a week. And it's not an, uh, a long-ended assignment. But if we don't take the time to try to organize what we're doing now and get end results, some of our problems and issues will never move forward. And I notice when we have a board meeting, an issue comes up, we talk about it, and tomorrow it's gone, but it's never resolved. So we need to pull someone in who will be everywhere in this building, talking to staff, working on specific items, which I will share with the departments or with the director, and we'll move forward. We need outcomes. We need information. It's the purpose of it. Can I respond to that? I was going to say, what can I say? Carolyn, I appreciate what you're saying. However, you are the first, or were, not anymore apparently, we're always the first to say, we need bids. We need bids, and you never explain in detail on here this says he's going to do inventory, as far as I can read. And for $100 an hour, whatever he's doing, we need bids of other people who can do this job. Bids are required based on the total amount. He's yes, but here it doesn't say a total amount. It says $100 an hour. It doesn't say for two weeks, for three weeks. It says $100 an hour. It doesn't say for how long. Well, if it makes that can feel, add up to quite a bit of money, honey. If it makes you feel better, we can make it $1,000. Well, go ahead. Then we still have to do with the bid process. For Put it out there for, for an hour. If he's only going to be here for an hour, that's wonderful. But he's not going to be here for just an hour. You can't have a, you don't need a bid if the total amount is under the biddable amount. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work with you here. That's the problem. There is nothing here that it's okay. We'll make it one thousand dollars amount. We'll make no, it one thousand dollars. Excuse me. If he works for a certain amount of hours, because you do not, you left it very open ended. Because it's exactly what it is. We need him to work on different processes. If it reaches more than a thousand dollars, then we'll reevaluate it. If that will make you comfortable, I'm not here to give somebody a full time job. This is a temporary position. For $100 an hour. You know, if you have technology skills and video graphing skills, everything he can do for us is what we need to get organized. Majority of what he can do for us, we have people already here who can do. That's the problem. There are a lot of things falling through the cracks. Yes. And we need And this is one of them. Because I know it's going to be four to three. Four to three what? The boat. Well, because there's no way I agree to pay somebody $100 an hour. I'm sorry. We're, you're talking about saving the taxpayers money. Spending $100 an hour for one person is not saving the taxpayers money, in my opinion. If we are unable to review and reevaluate our processes on our own and we have all these shortcomings, 
we need somebody to come in to go over everything and give us a report of the observations and changes that will help us perform better. That's the purpose of it. We need to move forward. I have been through this building on three separate occasions, and I have seen many, many processes and procedures that we really should evaluate because the time allocated and the end result just doesn't, it, it doesn't equal. So there are a lot of things we need to take a second look at. And since we're too busy and, and we busy haven't expert. accomplished it. Absolutely. I mean, it's, there are a heck of a lot of other people out there who have just as much, if not more, expertise. And they are not even given a chance to bid for this position. The motion on the table is for this item. And if, you want, if you're more comfortable with putting a $1,000 ceiling on it, it's fine. I don't need a $1,000 ceiling. Okay. I need it put out for other people to bid to do this. And again, a bid is required based on a certain amount. So I don't plan on paying this guy $20,000. I sure as heck hope not. Okay, yes, uh, our, our, if you're finished, I'll call on Trustee Keen Adams. Um, you've said a couple things, Carolyn, that are disturbing um, to me. I think the, the library is thriving. You said it's not, um, especially in a pandemic. I think we're doing really wonderful. The four hours that you spent interviewing Steve Gassel, um, I don't know, but I'm assuming that you were the only one there to hear what he had to say. No one else was consulted on this board. I mean, I don't even know if that was before the election or after the election. So I don't know who else is privy to the information that you have on his qualifications. Um, it's not fair to ask us to vote on this if we don't know his qualifications because those have not been provided to us, nor have we been given the opportunity to look at other people. It doesn't have to go out for bids, you're right. That doesn't mean we should only look at one person. Um, as far as the $1,000, Um, I don't know, is $1,000 what you pay for a campaign video? I don't know. Maybe that's an um, opportune number. I don't know about things falling through the cracks. I don't, haven't seen a list of things that you seem to think are not correct, but you know that hasn't been documented to any of the new board members either. So in 2015, I know I've seen documents that the systems and the administration and the IT were all evaluated in 2015 and passed with flying colors. That I can see. I have been provided with nothing. And I really, really strongly suggest you three who had him work on your campaign do not vote him to work in the library. That's a conflict of interest. The conflict of interest doesn't exist if the person is qualified to the function. Oh, we don't know that. Well, it's only what you're yeah, telling us. Going by your word. Well, you know what? Just like all our other employees, if, if, if when they're working and they're not performing, I'm sure it's obvious. It would be no different here. That doesn't make sense. So can one of us come and follow him around and make sure he's doing what he's supposed to be and not what he's not? Is that what you're telling us? Yeah. No. I, otherwise, how the heck do we know what he's doing for a hundred dollars an hour? Um, I just would like to respectfully suggest that the board consider adding to this motion some form of checking on Mr. Yesel's credentials and background before giving him access to the entire library. I feel that particularly when you are looking closely at IT things, you might be getting access to passwords and all sorts of high security things that could jeopardize our business. I realize you know him, I don't know him. So I am not trying to slander him here, but I think it's absolutely essential that background checking be done before he is given access, complete access to the library. Is that a procedure for all consultants that come in? That's a procedure for all employees. 
all employees are. But he's not a well, yeah, but my point is the is an hour. What the hell is he? My point is that the it's the access, it's the safety aspect right. of this. And my question is, your tech consultants go through? Um, they they are all very thorough vetted. Yes, they come with recommendations and okay. all sorts of information. So yes, they are very thoroughly vetted. They have credentials. Because they have recommendations, they have credentials for providing a service. We're talking about a risk factor in terms of. Well, if you don't want him to have passwords to get access to the network and things like that, then I don't have a problem with it. But if he's getting access to our network and our email systems, then I absolutely do feel that he ought to be checked. I mean, I think that's I just the least of my emails. It's a security issue. Well, I know he's going to, uh, there were a couple of things he will be evaluating where he'll probably need some type of access, which is true. And he, he would be coming to you, but you're right. So um, we can certainly include that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Because I think uh, we're about well, ready to um, roll. We didn't yeah. know uh, if we save some money on software licenses and things like that, the 100 hours is nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. We still need a security check on this man. It doesn't address the fact that you're hiring your friend. The paperwork you signed for the Cook County stating that you're not getting any benefit out of this position. Absolutely not. But giving a job to a friend could be considered. No, it's to a qualified person. You know what? I'm sure. Well, we don't know that he's qualified. We don't know. He hasn't shown us that. Okay, we need well, you'll see it in his work. No, I would like to see it before he's no. hired. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. Can we take a roll, please? Yes, please. Trustee Yes. Yes. What name did you say? Anusia. Anusia. Low-paying positions 
to help the, the patrons. And yet, we are hiring somebody for $100 an hour. I don't see the justification. Thank you. Trustee Olson. Are we not voting? No, this is a picture what you can want to say. Not the vote. I think we all know that the best practice is that the trustees do not interfere with staff hiring except to approve the job description. Best practice indicates that the library board supervises the director and then the library director supervises the staff and hiring. We apparently are not using best practice anymore. I'm disappointed in the last vote to hire a hundred dollars per hour for the street. Maybe because it's not a statute. Okay. Trustee King Adams? Yeah. Um, as I just stated, um, you know, the IT department is supposed to, as was recommended by a professional company, um, to have two full-time employees and the support of part-time employees. Um, currently, there are two full-time employees in the IT department, but they don't have that part-time help. That would probably help alleviate some of the issues you are referring to, Carolyn. Um, again, I have to point out that members, the item agenda, agenda item 6E is to freeze hiring, but agenda item 60 was to hire someone else. Doesn't make sense. Um, certainly the pandemic has impacted staffing. Um, they had to work in teams, they had to work in different kinds of shifts, things have been very different. It's been a juggling act. Um, in February of 2020, the library had 114 employees. Now there are only 99. However, things are beginning to open up again. God willing, we will have money to put on programs this summer and order more books and materials. Um, and if things get going, we are gonna need to replace those 15 employees. We can't expect 99 people to do the work of 114. And before anyone objects, yes, we most likely do need that many librarians in staff. If you think that we don't, that's fine, but let's do the research to find out otherwise. I think that now is actually the time to start hiring to replace the people that we have lost over the last year. Thank you. Um, again, this is a temporary hiring and substitute freeze. Uh, my experience with substitutes is they can, they are usually um, of the same level of the person they're replacing, which would be a librarian which I think is one of the higher end salaries. Um, I'm of the school of thought that when someone is absent or will be absent for a while, that we should job share and have the current employees fill in those positions instead of just automatically bringing in more people. I know it can be an inconvenience, but actually that's a very common practice in many corporations and other companies when someone is absent from your department, you automatically assume that load. And also, in some cases, an administrator may have to pick up the discrepancy in what needs to get done because the work must go out. It depends on if you're in a healthcare situation. And they are not hiring substitutes. So for a temporary period of time, as we go through our budget and we do a thorough reevaluation and have a better understanding of the way our library functions, this seems to be a decision we should be making at this time. Again, it's temporary. But it's temporary when we're reopening and need the, the staff here. I 
have one question, Trustee Keams. Yeah. You're referring to the matrix study from 2015? That was some of the things I referred to, yes. Okay. We are in the midst of COVID, and we are aware that it'll take at least three years before the economy really gets back to where it was. So there isn't going to be this overwhelming need. We need to understand where we are and what our requirements really are. And, and I think this is a step to slow the process and let us reevaluate and make those decisions. I think that the director has already done that. She does that on a daily basis. And that if we are going to be returning to some programs, whether they're outdoors or indoors or virtually, the staff needs to be in place to produce those. Okay. Um, if there aren't any more questions, I've been in the library. I mean, you could just look in the front here. We used to have like 40 cars out here like five or six years ago. Uh, there's like eight, ten cars at the most at any time, sometimes six, four cars. I mean, in the front Do you want it to stay that way? Because it will if we I don't pass that. I pass by here in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon. I mean, I, I don't think people are walking here and they're not coming on the bus here. We're, we're, we're not. We don't know at what point the circulation is going to come back after this COVID because it's not really at this point. It can't come back if we don't have staff to do the work. I wasn't excuse interrupting. Me, excuse me. Done. You weren't called on. Can we stop interrupting? No I'm taking a page out of your book, Carolyn. I'm just following what you've been doing since I came on board. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe. I, I didn't hear that, but if you're finished... I say if there's no work to do because people are not taking votes out of them, they're not in, in, in coming in, we, we don't need the staff at this point. We, we will if, no, no. if and when it comes back. It may not come back for a year. It may, it may come back in six months, but this is temporary. So we can make this change at the, the next board meeting or, or one in October. So his, his purpose is, the reason for this motion, he's justifying it by what the current status of the library is. Yeah, he can speak for himself. He just said you don't have to reiterate his statements. Well, I was hearing your comments back there. Okay, but I think I think we've talked enough. I think it's time to take a roll. Okay. Or did you have okay. a question? Yes, to say. Say. No. I did, but you voted me down, so go ahead and take the vote. I know how I'll vote then. Trustee you have something to add, please do. Thank you. Give me a second to get myself back into what I was thinking since you said I should not. Um, first of all, we are, as a state, are starting to open up more. And I'm not saying anything against that. I personally have had residents come to me and say, hey, when is the library opening? And this was last month, and we've been open. And I tell them, we are open. But a lot of residents don't even realize we're open yet. As soon as they all click and realize we're open, yes, the people are gonna be in here. And we need our programs and stuff because of the fact you're saying the pandemic, people can't afford to go out and do things on their own they look for the library to help them entertain and whatever there and keep keep them educated. So there, I've, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Cindy, would you please? I have one other thing. Go ahead. Yep. Um, a population that maybe you aren't considering is the youth. Um, you might you don't see them here because they haven't been vaccinated until recently, they started to get vaccinated. The staff that staffs the kids' space and the teen space downstairs really needs to be brought up to full staff because once those 12 and overs are fully vaccinated, they can come back and they want to come back. And, I mean, they're like chomping at the bit to come back. And so we need, we need the people here to do that for them. Thank you. Cindy, will you please take the roll? Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay. No. Available, and then we're going to be stuck with no materials. 
The safety of the public, the staff, and the materials could be put at risk by waiting until it's an emergency. If we have to wait until we are pumping the lower level because there's water in there, what's going to happen to the collections? It's ridiculous. I believe if you're a facilities manager and your responsibility is this building, you wouldn't wait until the lower level floods because you, tell if, you could tell if an item is to the point where it needs to be replaced because of an emergency that could occur. I mean, you don't have to wait till the water comes. What you need to realize, too, if you review the capital project, they aren't items that are going to make a major, that they are going to put us in uh, jeopardy or they're going, to, they're going to put anyone's health at risk. And as far as the roof goes, the determination of how urgent it needed to be replaced wasn't actually determined. It was, those were options, you have the money and you should spend it. So right now that's nowhere near an emergency either. But if you look at the special reserves list, you'll see the items. They're, they're not of a nature where we are putting any part of this building in jeopardy or, or, or putting anyone's health at risk. I disagree. Well, if you've seen the items and that's how you I feel, feel that, that I haven't seen them. Your opinion. Yeah, that's what I've said. I okay, thank you. It's an opinion. Rosansky. Yes. You had just clarified before, I thought, stating that if a project has already started being worked on, it can continue. Projects I know for a fact have had things started on them are the phones and the sign. Are you saying these cannot continue? No. Okay, Any fine. items Thank you. that were approved are not affected. I just want to clarify again. And you can cover your face some more, please. Thank you. Okay, Cindy, please take our, the roll. Trustee Gerber? Trustee Gerber? Yes. Yes. 
So the contracts are, so those contracts are fiscal year, not calendar year? Some, some of them are, yeah. So, so you have those that would be coming up now, right? Health insurance is, is a good example. As okay, well you as know, we're not talking about health insurance. We're talking about... Excuse me, as well as the liability insurance and the workers' compensation. So well, I think that's, that's a fiscal year contract. Okay. We're talking about purchases, and we mean items. And I know you okay, mentioned programs, but again, we're talking about we're talking about books. So I'm trying to figure out in this six-week period. And I'll be honest with you, I've been watching our budgets year after year after year. In April, we have so much money. Come the end of this fiscal year, it's all gone, and I can't I can't imagine how we spent it in six weeks. So I'm trying to put the brakes on so we can start to evaluate and come up with a process where our spending in the fiscal year is actually more relevant to what we need as opposed to continuum, a continuum of spending. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish, especially now that we plan on going through the budget process. I'm not asking you not to pay health insurance or any of that. I think the word is discretionary. It's just that we're entering the biggest program time of the year. And it would be that's, you know, that's where that money goes. It's non regular items. Okay, well, that, that was my question. So if that's what you're saying, non regular items, then I, I have that gives me a better idea. Thank you, Joe. Okay, I don't have any more clarification on this. Um, did everyone speak on this matter? I don't even know if I started. No, I don't know. Okay, okay. Um, Trustee McCullough. Well, typically, the federal government, no matter the federal government, the state government, whatever is allocated, they always manage to spend 100%. They never even whether it uh, carry forward into the next year. Very rarely. So, this is what we're trying to prevent. It, uh, it, let's say there's $5,000 left in some account or something. Uh, something that's not needed. So let's say uh, shelves are replaced that don't need to be replaced or something of that nature. So I, I, we're just trying to uh, prevent the discretion. Or so so we've already accumulated some savings maybe because uh, we didn't consume some items because of COVID or something. We just don't want to go out and spend that money. Just, we'd like to push it forward. That's the idea. If we, you know, that's, that's my stuff. Trustee Shumway, I'm going to ask you about the state budget. Trustee Rosansky? Yes. My biggest question is since this is for the whole month of June, how is this going to affect the summer where we have so many students as well as adults coming to the library? How is this going to affect the programs and so on for that? Our intent is not to affect the programs. Okay, thank you. Trustee Olson. making purchases. Again, I'm going to refer to the job description for the library director. In our bylaws, which we will not, should not be changing, the library director will have full responsibility for services, programs, book selections, and personnel management. It is a bylaw. We should not you want to take a vote on it? We're bound by the Illinois state statutes and we can't create any law that, that, is, that is not in line with the state statute. I think that may be more interpretation. And I think we're, well, as trustees, we are responsible for the money in this library. We need to be able to make decisions 
so that the actions of the employees are within some parameters. We're not telling them specifically what to do, but we need to make decisions because we are ultimately responsible. And that's where, the, that's where it seems to be great for some of us to understand. We're not tying anyone's hands, we're just starting to implement some processes so we can have some guidance in spending. Well, okay, thank you. Um, I just see it as another attempt to micro. I also received an email from a resident who stated that the reduced services that she projects <coughs> indicate the board's values are elsewhere instead of with the community and with the Once again, our purpose is not to decrease services. Well, that's our purpose. Our purpose is to is to provide them. Because we're going to scrutinize spending doesn't mean we have to cut programs and services to the residents. Our whole purpose is to provide these services and programs to the residents. It's reevaluating our spending structure as a whole that makes a difference, but it doesn't impact the residents receiving their services. So on July 1st, we'll be back to normal our right? On July 4th, 1st, we'll have a procedure in place, I'm sure, and we will move forward. Trustee King Adams. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, first question is for Joe. You mentioned that we um, shouldn't buy things that we don't need. I'm wondering if you have any examples. She, she mentioned a few examples of things that she shouldn't buy, we shouldn't buy. You said, Joe, that we didn't, shouldn't buy things that we don't need. So I'm wondering what things you think we don't need that we are buying currently. Well, you mentioned just spending. I'm not, I don't know what, what to do. You said, I, I'm saying, I don't say that. Let's, let's say they have extra money because we're closed for COVID. There's no need to talk. If there's extra money, we don't want to. We, there's the option to spend it, but we haven't spent it yet. I, I don't know why. I mean, but that's not what I asked you. I specifically am quoting you. You said, we shouldn't buy things that we don't need. What things? We haven't bought those things yet. <laughs> but you can't tell me what things you're well, considering. I, I don't know what things you're referring to. <laughs> okay, I guess that question answered itself. <laughs> Um, my next question is for Susan. Um, I'm wondering um, about the summer programs and the summer reading and all that. Um, I don't know if those purchases have all been made. Are those the things that are going to be between what you and Carolyn were discussing about what the things that you don't have to stop spending on? I don't know if those are the things included for the summer. Am I making sense? Those will, those will be regular purchases, I would say. I'm sorry, I'm talking to Susan. Well, um, are the summer reading programs and the summer things for the kids, are those going to be paid for according to what we're talking about right now? I would have said that would be a thing that we were not currently buying, but Joe's sounding like that is a thing. See, I, I do think this is going to be confusing in the details. It's, um, yeah. Thank Maybe. you, because that's exactly what I thought. Yeah. Hopefully we can clarify as we get through our budget process, which I think starts next week. Right. Or if you need to, yeah, but summer reading starts next week too. And I'm hopefully they bought that they need for the first right. weeks of summer reading. But if they don't, I, I guess I need to be sure that I'm not going to get yelled at if it's not like an emergency in the sense of the roof blew off, but it's an emergency in the sense of we have this program on our calendar. We told people we were doing it and we need the supplies to be able to execute. So you're saying the, uh, the items you may need in the next three weeks have either been purchased yet? I don't know is what I'm saying. Okay. I can't guarantee. Well, that would be something that we, but again, we're not here to jeopardize programs or services. May I continue? Thank you. So I know that you said it's not the intent to affect programming, but it is going to affect programming. Specifically, what we're just talking about, it's not clear what can be purchased and what can't be purchased. So it is gonna affect it no matter what the intent is. Um, and I do have a feeling that when those things are impacted and patrons come
come into the library and want to use databases that aren't paid for and not renewed or when a kid comes in and can't get their summer kit, the employees are going to have a barrage of complaints and you know maybe we should be there with them to hear it. Again, it is not our intent to affect programs and services to residents. I understand that. Thank you. But I also extended that statement to say it will still affect it, whether that's the intent or not. Well, thank you for your opinion. I appreciate it. And uh, Cindy, could you please take the roll? Yes. And may I ask 
why you came up with these specific dates without discussing it and asking if they're good dates for any of us, since some of us have jobs and family commitments that cannot just come three days in a row for these meetings. To be honest with you, it's so late in the budget year, we just threw them in. Okay. Because we need to get going. It's I'm not saying we should be going on the budget. So if you can't make it, I think these You're meetings, not voting on anything. These meetings will be videotaped, so you can then obtain the information that you missed. Okay, we are not voting on anything. Are workshops or information gathering? Thank you. I'm just making sure it's not like things in the past where they call something and then the votes are made and the people other board members weren't able to be there and things were passed. Well, if you look at this schedule of dates, um, there are workshops and then we jump into the actual budget um, meeting. So mm -hmm. the budget meeting would be when all this is compiled and there would be decisions made at, that, at the budget meeting. Okay. With Trustee McCoola, we are on, oh I'm sorry, were you finished? Yeah, I'll finish. Okay. We have two other people to talk to. Excuse me. Trustee Makula, we are on uh, 6H, the 6H, the budget workshops. Um, I missed you. Did you have any comments? No. Okay. All right. Trustee Olson. Um, yeah. Could, could you um, clarify a little bit what the role of the trustees is? Are we just going to sit and listen to presentations mm -hmm. by the department? or do we have any kind of active role? Actually, um, for the years you've been on the board, our budgets have been very general. This year, for the first time, our budget is broken down by departments and services, which helps us better understand what happens in the department, the costs associated with it, and everything else that pertains to that specific department. After I reviewed all of those those pages, you know, that budget um, binder that Greg gave us, mm -hmm. we've come up with additional information we would like. So in terms of programming, they have a better idea of the breakdown of the total cost in different areas. So that's what we would be hearing from, from the um, department heads. Normally that's valuable information. So I'm just curious, who's we? We we we've come up with who who is that? Because well, I, I guess it's it's clear the newer trustees are interested in a different informative. Well, form. there were discussions with more than two people concerning library business. No, there yes. weren't. Yes, well, that's what it sounds like. I'm sorry, you can clarify. It. Well, they just became trustees on Wednesday. So I'm sure there were many days before Wednesday when they were sworn in that they weren't trustees. Okay. And they don't follow under the they will do the meetings. Are there any other questions? Trustee Queen Adams? Yeah. Um, just to point out once again, these dates and topics were made without anyone else's input, as far as I know. Um, and I think that what Patty and Diane are trying to get at in their questions is that, to reiterate Patty's again, there is no voting of trustees at these workshops, and there is no active role of trustees at these workshops. I think that what we're getting at is all we're doing is listening. Right? Just to get it on the record one more time. Are you asking that you don't need to attend? Is no. I'm here? asking that we are not going to be voting on anything. And we're not going to be moving on anything. No, for the second time. Right. I just want it on the record again. We're, all we're doing is listening, right? Well, I wish sure everyone would start do. listening now. But that's, that's a really time. Did, that's a workshop. Thing. That's a great day. Are, are for gathering information. And the question just was to put it on the record again. Okay, moving on. Uh -huh. May I, I just need a clarification on this one too, I'm sorry. Um, there is only a week for four. I'm 
sorry, uh, we're going to need a three minute break for technology reasons. I apologize. No problem.
It's June 16th of four meetings. Yes. 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 So we're going to be doing both at the same time like we used to do? Uh, normally, we would always call a separate budget meeting. On a right. Day. And that Could would be... We, can I make a suggestion? Could we change the date of the 16th and leave that the regular budget meeting on the board meeting since that's what it's on record for? And maybe move it a little afterwards, so 18th, 19th, or even the following Monday. Well, I think we're under a time crunch, but we and do I understand it. But we do have the budget meeting scheduled for Monday, June 14th, which would be strictly the budget meeting. Then the board meeting is when you get to ask a few questions or bring up some of the budget. So, um, but actually on the 14th, what would be taking place would be the numbers that were presented based on the input from the departments and then whatever variations may occur it would only be two days before the 16th and that's when we would expect to see the adjustments and I don't know if that's feasible, Greg. <laughs> I, I would think... Well, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of issues. Um, one issue, I don't know what your expectation is terms of what these presentations look like. Yeah, they look like 362 pages like they delivered. Like they do meeting. not re they do not reflect your binder um, at all. I mean that's I, that's just can't happen. No it's not at all. If it's, if it's a singular spreadsheet of numbers, I can do that all day long. You have to tell me what your expectation is for a deliverable. Absolutely. And I was hoping we could go over that Wednesday and then based on what you think that we would proceed. But in the meantime, could we schedule the 14th at least for, or is that too soon? Well, I, you know, like I said, I don't know what your expectation is. You're asking me to make a commitment for a date, and but not talk about what the deliverable was until two days from. So it would. So it's, I'm, a, I'm at a little bit of a loss to try to give you an honest, you know, the accurate del answer. The deliverable on the 14th would be your actual budget um, uh, layout, that spreadsheet. The numbers in it would be affected by whatever was ascertained in the workshops. So you just want you just want spreadsheets. Right. That would be. That's your presentation. Yeah. Yes. I, I can give you spreadsheets. I just can't. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that before you pass the budget, you have to have what's called a tentative ordinance. And once you have the tentative ordinance passed, you have to wait at least 30 days before you uh, go to a public hearing and, and actually pass the budget. So, uh, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't given you the tenant of ordinance because I just gave you the budget uh, at, at that last week's meeting. Uh, so I don't know what you have in mind in terms of passing, actually passing the budget. Well, of course, I, the hope was to pass it for the beginning of the fiscal year, but my question back to the tenant of budget. Once you approve budget you have to wait 30 days before yes. it is a, it has to be 30 days. It is by law. Um, what can you do with it with the tentative budget when it, it, can you change the tentative budget? Yeah, that's why it's tentative. So seriously, because we've no, never yeah. really made any okay. You know, I mean it's you know we you know we've done this before and then we've made changes in time. So yeah. what's the date of the tentative budget on the Plank Dorf and Jenkins calendar? The recommended deadline is uh, July 3rd, and the statutory deadline is August 29th. So then we would be entering our budget year with a tentative budget. Yes. We've done many more. Yeah, we? Well, we could actually have, well, it may be called a tentative budget, but maybe by then it could be pretty clear. It'll be where pretty close to accurate, though. Well, after all these dates, yeah. Yeah, yeah I so would, that would, would be, be yeah. pretty close. 
But I'm sorry, and, and so the third is the tentative. When is the when is the final budget? Not until August. The final budget is let's see, August. Their recommended is August second, and the statutory deadline is September twenty eighth. Well, no I'm later than the fourth Tuesday. I don't. I don't I'm not a fan of having a finalized budget after you're in the, the fiscal year, which it represents that. At this point, though, I'm kind of stuck with you. No, no, we're going to have to wait till September to finalize the budget. Well, the, my question is, we usually always have to meeting for the, for the residents where we, if we come in early for a board meeting and let them, you know, go over what, I forget what that's even called. So we go public over, hearing, and that's public the thing that has to be thing. separated by 30 days. From I the know. Tentative. So any way you look at it, we will have to have the public hearing in July then, because there won't be 30 days before the June meeting. So it will have to be July the public hearing. Okay. So the tentative again is what day? July 3rd. July 3rd is their recommended deadline. The statutory deadline is August 29th. But we have to wait a few days for the public hearing, and if you say July 3rd, there's no way you can do it at the July meeting. So it has to be by the end of June to give you enough time to do it at the uh, July meeting. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Greg, I'm sorry. You could. You could actually have a tentative for it that's ready for passage. With all the changes and the background of the budget workshops by June 16. You think so? That's not too much? No. Thank you. Uh, which means, I, I don't know what date the uh, July date is on. Did somebody get a July date? That's the third Wednesday. Yes, the third Wednesday. We're doing it the third Wednesday. So that's the first. No, that would only be uh, 28. It's on the 21st. It's on the 21st. So we can actually pick it for. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we could actually do the final passage of the budget for this um, when we first had that board meeting. And we had the public hearing just prior to it as we had the So we'll, you know, we'll only do that kind of days. But the, do we have to wait that long? Uh, we have to do 30 days, so that's mm -hmm. all you have to wait that long. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And we're trying to take advantage of the days that we already have. And that's not more than reasonable either, Carolyn. No, no, I understand. And just the point of information, we uh, routinely at um, August passages of the uh, of the budget by the final uh, budget. That's true. Uh, I remember uh, that. Yeah. Uh, except for the last few years, when we uh, we started early. I think it's been five years. Through. Yeah. We tried to do it uh, on June 30th. And sometimes it works. It's hard in the election year because the incoming board wants. Okay, then these dates on, on this motion are are acceptable, the 14th and the 16th. And then the um, public hearing hearing would be July 21st, the budget mm -hmm. date. Okay. You know, so, you know, I don't know what we want. Well, I don't know what date we want to come, so I'm for the last bullet point. That's the 21st, right? That's the 21st. Yeah. That's great. So it should the, be like 6, you know, 625 or something like that. Just a little bit. The 10 minutes, do they get 10 minutes or 5? Well, we usually get done at 5 minutes. Uh, well, no, I, I think you have to let it be as long as you have people to talk. That yeah. one you can't turn okay. so, so, so here's So here's the issue. If you start at 625 and you run 20 minutes, it's okay to start a meeting late. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you schedule them 20 minutes apart, it's a five minute meeting, you can't start the meeting early. You understand what I mean? I understand. So we can be sitting there. Yes. Well, it, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, okay. it's, it's very inconvenient, but, you know. No, I understand. Okay. Caroline, I think this sounds great so far. We've been talking about my only concern is seeing how much actually is accomplished on the 14th and determining how much it still has to be accomplished on the 16th. We might have to push some of this stuff back 
to the next meeting that is up for the general board meeting. I think I think all the work on the 14th is Greg and the spreadsheets. I mean, in his Excel sheet, spreadsheet. So I think if I'm confident he can pull that together. After we meet with him on Wednesday, he'll know if we're unrealistic and need to okay. reevaluate the worry the thing. I mean, it's, isn't it okay if we find we have to adjust and maybe push back some of the things that we will have on the docket for the 60th? I'd like to not see us go further than that because we're already past our, our, our fiscal year. No, I'm not so saying the budget. I'm saying the stuff that would generally be in that meeting. Because that's a regular board meeting. Well, that's up to the budget is the most important thing. Susan concerns me reevaluate the agenda for that day and, and see, you know, what we can do. Sure, absolutely. Because the budget is the most important thing. I just have a question. Um, just wondering if I'm the only trustee that's not available to attend at June 14th. Or everyone. Is everyone else able to attend on the 14th? She couldn't come on the 14th. So is there any way maybe what day could you come? I could come the week before on the night on that Wednesday. So could we do it the week before? I think the purpose for the 14th is so all the information that we get from the department we can work with. But we should have that already. I mean, you're talking about Greg putting it on a spreadsheet. Do you okay. think work goes to Greg? We have to be evaluated. The information we're getting from the department will be reviewed by us. Okay. And, and then Greg gets the final figures, but we still have to go through all of that. So that's why we gave ourselves that week. I just feel completely um, you know, excluded from these meetings because I can't go to Florida. And because I can't I go to Florida? Yes. I can't go to, to yeah, no, I'm sorry, maybe three. I can't go on uh, June 1st, June 3rd, or June 14th. But the 14th is probably the most important aspect. The meetings, those two, three workshops, are in our information gathering. I know. We can review them. I understand. And then that's where the and then that's where we determine what we're doing. Right. Is there some way we can that. change the date it. of the 14th so she can be here? We can't make it sooner because we need to. Well, to even the, the next day, the Tuesday. Would that Tuesday be okay for you? No, I had planned a vacation to come back on the 15th so that I'd be here for the board meeting on the 16th. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to be in town some bad time also, so these numbers work for me, I think. Well, thank you. Anybody look at, we're going to have, we're going to be shy a board member for the budget. But we're not making any decision. The 14th is just going over spreadsheets. Is that what you're saying? Now the 14th is draft one presentation. It's still not final. So that's the presentation from Greg. Right. Okay. Question. Greg, since you're presenting this to us on the 14th, is it possible? Then is it possible for you? If you can view the video of it, yeah, and it's fine. If I'm the only one that can't make it, then that's not. But a it, video. as long as you can view the video, yeah, that's fine. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, Carolyn, I don't think you asked for a motion, but I don't think anybody. Will. Actually, at this point, I have no idea what I did. But you know, <laughs> I'll be glad again to ask. Do I have a motion to approve the twenty? 21-22 library budget meeting Monday, June 14, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Draft one presentation of the budget. Wednesday, June 16th at 6.30 p.m. Adjustments to the budget presentation. So basically that's when we should do our final vote, correct? Final vote. Oh, I'm not finished. Please. And the special budget meeting for public hearing is on July 21st. Greg, is that wrong? I it's thought it's the 16th didn't jump, it's staying the 16th. So, uh, uh, so the third, 
Wednesday of the month. Uh, generally, there's four weeks apart, but there's four meetings that are five weeks apart. Because if you add up all of those intervals, then we get 52 weeks. So June 16th is the date. That's a five week date. Okay, all right, so just, I'm, I'm sorry. The 16th to the 20th, yeah, first Oh, I got you, I got you. Okay, I'm sorry, do I need to repeat that or can I just say, do I have a motion? Yeah, motion. Motion? I move. Also, thank you. Yes. I believe, do we have, a, have our discussion? Yes. Okay, um, Cindy, could you please make a roll? Yes. Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee Abdullah? Yes. And the easy Polish name. Yes. Trustee Olsen? Yes. Trustee Nash. Are we on eight or five? Sorry. Yeah. On eight. Aye. 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 Well, we're voting on the 14th, the 16th, and July 21st.
Yeah. It doesn't really look like the AM, but thanks for <laughs> Okay, can I have a motion to approve the terms of engagement for legal services of Clark, Baird, and Smith? Attorney Yvette Heinzelman.